This is gonna be a rundown of the Smart Account Portal. This is where you're gonna go in and manage all of your licenses when you buy something from Cisco. So we're gonna talk about what that process looks like in here. I'm gonna show you guys how to get into it, go over what virtual accounts are, create virtual accounts, and then I'm gonna show you guys some role-based uh, user access as well and how you can manage your different users that have access to the virtual accounts and Smart Accounts. So with that, let's get into it. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to give this video a like. To start off, we're gonna to go to software.cisco.com. This is Cisco Software Central. This is basically how you get into all of Cisco cloud portals pertaining to licensing. So we have the smart licensing stuff on the left side that we're gonna deep dive into. Um, you can also get into downloads and upgrades if you have any traditional pack files there. And then EA Workspace is, is also here as well. If you have an EA, that's how you would access that. Let's first take a look at Smart Software Manager. We're gonna go ahead and click on Manage Licenses here. When you jump in, the first thing you're gonna notice is if there's any alerts, you've got your major alerts in red, minor alerts in yellow, and then anything informational in blue here. Uh, basically, I'm getting some alerts right now that I have a shortage of licenses. I'm just doing some stuff in a lab here just to show this. And yep, my 9300 that I have registered here just doesn't have enough licenses to cover it. So you're gonna get the insufficient license uh, alert right there. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at our actual licenses. To, so to see where those are, we're gonna go over and we're gonna click on inventory here. When I do that, so the first thing you're gonna see is we're in a virtual account called default. And by default, that's where you get dumped into. And if partners don't know exactly where to place licenses, they're gonna pull up your smart account and they're gonna just say, okay, put it in the default virtual account because we don't know exactly where it is. The default virtual account is basically like your desktop. It's kind of like the catch-all for licensing files. And then you can go ahead and you can create different virtual accounts for organizations. So that's like having a bunch of different folders on your desktop and you can go in here and you know you can create as many different virtual accounts as you want and make it make sense to your organization so i see a lot of different ways that uh, co companies out there define these you know one way of doing it is okay the security team they're going to have their own virtual account and we're going to transfer all the licenses into that virtual account for security you could also have a networking virtual account and all the network product stuff is gonna go in there. Or I've seen it broken out based on different locations. So all of the licenses for the Florida location are gonna live in that virtual account and all the license files for New York are gonna live in that virtual account. Again, just do whatever makes sense for your organization, but that's basically where that is. Um, right now we're on the general tab. We'll come back here in a second. This is how we're gonna be able to generate tokens um, to get stuff associated to my default virtual account. But basically, to see our licenses, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the actual license button there. Now right here, I could take a look at, again, all the licenses that I have available to me. And if I want to, I can go ahead and say, okay, well, here's all the licenses that we purchased. Again, I need to transfer some of these licenses, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit action there. And I'm gonna transfer these licenses over to um, one of my other virtual accounts here. So I wanna go ahead and transfer licenses into sale. We'll do that. I just have a virtual account that I named after myself. And I'm gonna say one DNA Advantage license is what I wanna transfer over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit transfer. And now that one license is over there. Previously I had 24, or sorry, 25. Now I'm down to 24 wireless DNA Advantage licenses. And if I switch over to my cell virtual account, you're gonna go ahead and see I have one DNA Advantage license inside of there. Now I can go ahead and I can click on that. And I can actually go ahead and look at the event log here. And this is actually showing me where this license came from. It, so it came from this default virtual account. It was transferred over and it gives you the date and it actually shows you who the user is that actually transferred that license over as well. We can click on transaction history. So if we're wondering like, oh, when did we purchase this license or what's it from or when does it expire? You can view all that information by clicking on the license and then clicking on transaction history here. And if this wasn't a demo environment 
and uh, this was from an actual sales order, you would be able to view that SO number right there, and then you can give that to any Cisco employee and they can look up and say, oh yeah, this was the order you did you know, two years ago and it had like all your switches on it or all your wireless on it. So it's good information to have if you're trying to track down uh, any licenses or a, you know, what product did this belong to. I'm gonna go ahead and click on product instances here just so you guys can see what this looks like as well. I just clicked on a different license here just, just to show it because this is when I actually have registered. So when a box, a switch in this case, goes and says, hey, I'm gonna be using a license, it's gonna pull down that license, you're gonna see which product is actually using that. And it's gonna be right here under product instance and it's gonna show the, the product ID. So that's this is a 9348UXM box and then it's also gonna show the serial number of that box. So this way you have a clear correlation that this box is using this license. Now to make that happen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the general tab. And when you're at the general tab, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new token. Now basically what we can do inside of here is we can say this is for uh, 9300 switch that we're trying to get registered and it's gonna this token is gonna expire after 30 days so basically the switch needs to hit the smart account portal within those 30 days using this token or this token expires and then you can put in here how many tokens we want to generate so this token can be used one time which is one box or maybe five times because I've got five boxes that I'm gonna register in those 30 days for this example I'm just gonna put one in here and we're gonna go ahead and say create token now there's my token, I can go ahead and click that and I can copy that out of here. So to use that token, we're gonna jump over to my 8000V virtual router here. And this is gonna be the same process for any routers or switches or anything that's iOS XE based. And the method that we're gonna go over first is how do I get this, this one box to talk directly to my smart account in the cloud? If you do not wanna do that and you wanna hit a on-premise server first because you wanna air gap the box and everything, this is not gonna be that method. This is just if I wanna get that box talking directly to my smart account cloud, this is how I'm gonna do it. So the first thing we're gonna do once we're into the box is go into config T mode. And from here, we're gonna to wanna to issue a couple commands. The first one is license smart transport smart. So we're gonna get it ready for smart licensing and we're gonna transport it using the smart transport mechanism. Next, we're gonna go ahead and issue the license smart URL default. Basically, this just says use the default URL that's out in the cloud. Then we actually have to get out of config mode. We're gonna say end. It's very important. I've seen a lot of people make this mistake and they're trying to finish the configuration in config mode. Once you're out of that, you're gonna go ahead and issue the command license smart trust ID token. And then this is where we're gonna enter in that ID token. So you can just click on the up arrow here and copy this information. And we're gonna do an all and force. And now this box is gonna go out and it's gonna to register to that virtual account. And then when I do that, if we come back over to our virtual account here and we just hit a refresh, you can see that it's showing that it's expired and uses one of one because it was, it was actually used up that token. And if I run a show license status command in here, I can actually take a look and see that the box actually went and reached out to the smart account. So last report push was August 1st at 1022 in the morning here and trust code installed August 1st as well. So we went and installed that trust code here and then it went and pushed what it was using to the smart account portal uh, at the same exact time. And if I come back over to my smart account portal here and click on licenses, let's take a look. So we could see here that we, we are using a DNA Advantage license here in use. I don't have any available to use right now. Uh, the DNA Advantage tier two license and we're also using a Network Advantage Tier 2 license. I don't have these in here, so I'd have to transfer them from another virtual account or order these to stay compliant. But you can see that it's actually pulling those. And this one's actually pulling a uh, HSEC license as well. This, that's what this router US export license is. I actually have these licenses, uh, one available, but I'm using two, so I'm actually deficient one in here as well. So again, I'd have to true that up. I'd have to get licenses and put them in this virtual account. One more thing I wanna point out, 
where it says your virtual accounts here. If you see this little symbol next to it, uh, the three dots with a circle around it, that means that you're actually using SSM on-prem. So that's that satellite server. So if you have devices that are not hitting Cisco Software Central directly, um, they're gonna be bouncing through that on-premise server. That's what this symbol looks like. So basically you have to create a dedicated virtual account uh, for that on-premise appliance. You can't share a virtual account. So if I have the Sail Campus virtual account, account that lives in the cloud, I cannot have my satellite server also hitting this virtual account. I need to have a dedicated virtual account for that. And you can go in here and you can still you know, view if there's any, if I had any licenses in here, let's try another one. Um, you can still view all the licenses in here and everything. Now let's switch over. We're gonna go back to Cisco Software Central and I'm gonna show you guys how to manage your smart account. This is where you're gonna create your virtual accounts and create all the different users that have access to this stuff. So go ahead and click on manage account and you're gonna be able to, when you get in here, you're gonna see some basic information. Here's the smart account name, the address that it's registered to, all that basic information. And if I wanna go ahead and create virtual accounts, pretty simple, right at the top here where it says virtual account, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. I can click on create virtual account, fill in the information and go through the prompts and then you're gonna be able to create a new virtual account for your organization. I'm gonna cancel out of that and we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna talk about users. So if I click on users, here are all the different users that have access to my smart account and different virtual accounts out there. So you could take a look at the first one here, AAA, and it has access to all virtual accounts and is a smart account viewer. So can't they can't actually make any changes, transfer licenses, anything like that, but they can go in there and they can actually take a look at um, you know, what boxes are using what licenses. If I need to add a new user, I can do that right from here. And when I'm in here, I can go ahead and add users manually or import them from a CSV file. What you're gonna to wanna to do now is enter in the CCO ID of the person you want to be a manager of, of a smart account or a virtual account. Go ahead, click add. It'll do a quick lookup, make sure that person's valid. Click next here. And then do you want this person to have access to the entire smart account and all virtual accounts underneath? or just particular uh, virtual accounts. Uh, for this purpose, I'll say selected virtual accounts, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna define a user role for this person. So is this person a virtual account administrator, or are they a user, or just a viewer? So I could say administrator here, and then I can go ahead and I can click on all the virtual accounts that they have access to. Or maybe this is just a security team, and they're only gonna get access to you know, their security smart account, or sorry, virtual account, you can click on just that one account there. Go ahead, and hit next, and it'll go ahead and validate, and it'll add that user for that smart account and virtual account. Just gonna hit cancel there, and then now, last thing I wanna touch on here is the notifications. And when I go into notifications here, this is gonna give me my change management log, basically, so which user, um, elevated user XYZ to an administrator role or downgraded a user to a view only role. Um, all that information can be seen basically in here. And the event log basically showing the same thing here, uh, just in a little bit of a different format. And guys, that's the basics of smart accounts and virtual accounts and how to navigate your way around. If you guys have any questions, make sure you post them below in the video and I'll get back to you. As always, thanks for watching.